All right, it is Monday morning, 7.30. You know what that means, it's our time. It's Monday Morning Mojo, and I'm so excited. I'm Anna Gibbs, and it is my honor to spend this time with you weekly uh, to discuss things that I trust help you to think bigger, stretch you, to help you grow, to help you look at things in a different way. Uh, you know, there's a lot happening around us on any given moment and on any given day. And so I started this uh, Facebook group and this uh, weekly session, this live really group coaching session uh, just about a year ago. And uh, it was really, I think, an epiphany that I had at the time we were really in the middle of trying to navigate our new reality around COVID and uh, social distancing and, uh, you know, working from home and just, I knew, you know, from conversations I was having and things I was reading and, and listening to that many of us were feeling really isolated and it was affecting our mindset. It was affecting our emotions. And so being a coach, who uh, has spent more than the last decade supporting people both professionally and personally, and having a lot of tools in my toolbox on emotional well being, behavior, and um, productivity, I would say for sure. I decided that I would put myself out there and see if anyone wanted to hang out and chat with me a little bit each week and keep our mind focused on where we wanted to be uh, rather than where it was taking us and, you know, just create a space for growth and opportunity. And so a year later, we're, we're still doing it. And I'm really excited. It's an honor and a blessing. So thanks for being here every week. I um, appreciate knowing that this is helping some of you. And um, if you do find value in this, please share our Facebook group with other people, uh, because in addition to this uh, weekly session every Monday morning, I do my best to share a lot of free content on the Facebook group, Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs. So please share it with other people. All right, let's jump in. Good morning. I'm excited uh, because today we're going to talk about one of my favorite books from John Maxwell, and that is The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. Uh, as you can see, I've put a lot of time into this book. It is something that I keep pretty handy. Uh, the reason why I love this book is um, because it's very direct and it's very easy to read. So we're going to work from this book over the next couple of Mondays. And um, I'm excited because I know that you're going to get a lot out of this. So I would encourage you, if you don't have one already, to grab a piece of paper and a pen because I think you're going to want to take notes. And um, we're going to jump right in. So, and as always, if you have anything that you would like to share, any questions, please, you know, feel free to let me know. Use the chat on Facebook. I'm going to make sure I have it open so I can uh, hang out with you guys there too. And of course, to my friends who are always with me here on Zoom, I appreciate you being here and you know, let me know if there's anything that you would like to talk about. So, all right, good morning, let's jump in. So the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth by John Maxwell um, is really about reaching your full potential. And what I love about this book, as I said, it's easy to read and it, it is easy to follow uh, because he has a lot of actionable steps in this book. And I'm gonna give you some of those this morning. Um, and what I, I think is so important about this conversation today is helping everyone to understand that growth is not something to take for granted, that growth is not automatic. Um, growth requires your participation because even you know the plants that you have in your home require you to water them, take care of them. Uh, the the things that are growing outside the same, right? They need they need nurturing and they need attention. And so your personal growth is no different. And I think that sometimes we can fall into that trap of thinking that we will just learn and get better over time. And that's not necessarily true. I mean, you may see incremental improvements in skill set and awareness, but to really grow and to really break through to your next level of productivity and achievement, it requires something much more purposeful. And that's what I'm excited to share with you today. And that's really one of the main reasons why I became a coach uh, is because I wanted to really be a part of 
that process of change with people. I wanted to support them in becoming more aware of where they are now and where they want to be and bridge that gap. And so, uh, you know, as I said, growth has to be intentional. So if you're taking notes, that would be the first thing I would write down. Growth is intentional. Um, and so I think then we have to also know that we, when we think about intentionality around growth, where are we aligning our growth? Where is it anchoring? So your growth really should align with your passion and your purpose, right? So that when you, you're focused on taking in additional knowledge and skills and information, when it lines up with your passion and your purpose, your whole world kind of opens up, right? And so we want to, to really know that when we have those actions in alignment with our passion and purpose, then what we do becomes much more meaningful and what we do becomes much more significant. And that's really living a life by design. And so uh, those are a couple of things that I would jot down if you're journaling this morning. So design your growth to match your goals, right? So when I'm working with our staff here at our Hudson Valley group uh, at Keller Williams, or if I'm coaching individually, um, when we look at establishing goals, whether they're um, professional goals, uh, goals you know, like a strategic plan for the company, personal goals, the next thing that I want to ask uh, of you is, what do you need to learn? What skills do you need to acquire in order for you to really be at the top of your game to achieve your goals? So there, uh, oftentimes we talk about a personal growth plan. And so that's something else that you, you may want to put some time into thinking about is what skills do I need to learn in order for me to really hit my goals? So that is why this concept of growth is so important because who you are today may not be enough to be where you want to go, right? And that, and that has nothing to do with self-worth, but everything to do with skill set, knowledge, and, and learning additional things. So how do you plan to become better? How do you plan to, you know, really grow? I think it's about being clear and intentional about a growth plan. Um, and because when you are, then not only are your actions more meaningful, but your actions are productive. And the difference between being productive and busy is that when we are focused on actions or activities that are truly productive, then we're seeing the results and we're seeing how we're moving closer to our goal. When, when we don't have that in place, then what we do becomes just busy. And so our goal is not to be busy, our goal is to be productive. And when we're truly more productive, then oftentimes we can accomplish what we need to do in less time as well. Because being busy uh, often, um, because we don't have, it lacks maybe the focus and the clarity around the activities, we tend to waste time that we don't really have. So those are um, some other things I would jot down in my notes. So our plan is to become better today. Our plan is to think about our growth with intentionality because we don't wanna just be busy. We wanna do things that are meaningful and significant. We wanna work smarter, not harder. And we wanna see our success show up incrementally because oftentimes with success, first it's gradual and then it's sudden. And, and it seems like as we go through our year or time, the things that we're doing uh, may feel like, oh gosh, it's taking so long to get to my goal. But in reality, those small incremental steps are really what is, is has the power behind it. And then suddenly it's like, oh my gosh, look at all the progress I've made. All right, so a couple of things I wanna go over with you this morning is to identify what we would call in coaching as a gap and specifically a gap trap, right? Where we can find ourselves getting stuck uh, and what those gap traps are in terms of growth. So just jot some of these down. Let me know if you have questions. Good morning, everyone on, on Facebook. Thanks for being here. Um, and just let me know if you have any questions. So the first uh, growth gap trap, and say that slowly, that I already talked about this morning is the assumption that growth will just happen automatically. Right? We can get stuck in that thinking, and when we do, we may not search 
or seek out those opportunities to really help us grow. So that's the first gap trap is thinking that you'll grow automatically uh, when in reality growth has to be much more intentional. Uh, the other gap trap that we can fall into and get stuck in is this sense of, well, I'm not really sure if I know what to do next, right? And so rather than getting stuck in that way of thinking, right, and saying, I'm not sure what to do next, how do you seek out some support, maybe through coaching or mentorship or, or consulting? How do you research um, and really get more insight into what those activities could be that get you moving forward, right? So saying, I don't know what to do is a gap trap. Another gap trap in terms of growth could be um, sort of along the same lines is, is kind of getting stuck with pulling the trigger or moving forward because you think you need to research too much. <laughs> Some people are, uh, constantly taking the time to, to get ready uh, or research or, or build the, the plan, the blueprint, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, it has to be balanced with action, right? Because the only thing that really creates results are the activities. So I think that's a gap trap too, is taking too long to get ready or taking too long to research or thinking that you need more time. At some point, you just have to take action. Another gap trap around uh, growth could be the concept um, that you're afraid to make a mistake or you're afraid to get it wrong. And if you've learned anything from this Monday Morning Mojo over the last year is that we can't be afraid of that. Uh, putting ourselves out there, uh, working through our activities, getting um, into motion, right, is really the key to seeing results. And Sometimes we learn, uh, sometimes we win, but it's, it's really not about failing as much as it is about what can I learn from that experience. And so if we create a limiting belief um, around success versus failure, then we may also find ourselves paralyzed and not move forward. So, I mean, no one intends to fail, no one sets out to fail, however, we have to know that when we decide to put ourselves out there in big ways, especially, and we're looking to build our goals, uh, we're looking to create action plans towards those goals personally and professionally, we might not get it 100% right. And yet when that happens, when there is a misstep or uh, something doesn't work out as you plan, or if you wanna call it a failure, can you embrace that in a way that helps you to be much more open-minded and realize, okay, time out, what can I learn from this? What can I see as an opportunity because of what just happened and how will I apply that into the future, right? So, so don't get stuck in that gap trap of thinking that, oh, but what if I fail? Well, what if you do? What will you learn? How will you do something different and better the next time? But yet, what if you don't fail? What if you actually succeed? See, you'll never know unless you try. So I would definitely have uh, some notes on that one, write that down. Uh, the other thing that I wanted uh, to share with you guys about this gap trap around growth uh, is the sense of inspiration and motivation. And I get it, you know, I probably look like someone who enjoys making a career out of inspiring and motivating people. And I certainly do, I find that to be uh, very meaningful, however, I want you to know that I understand that that's a very small part of our success plan, right? Feeling motivated and inspired is, is exciting and can be a stimulus, but motivation is fleeting. And we have to be aware of what our emotions are doing and saying. And I think the opportunity is for us to really get clear and develop a focused plan around a goal that is attainable, a SMART goal, right? Specific measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. And we can pepper a little inspiration and motivation in there, but the truth is that motivation is fleeting. Inspiration often comes from someone else, right? If you think about that. Uh, and so we have to know that there has to be a big why that is at our core, that is kind of acting as our GPS to help us move forward with our goals. Okay, so those are some gap traps around um, change and goal setting and growth. 
And I would like to now uh, share with you two of the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth by John Maxwell. And I think over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to share a few more with you during the month of May. And um, I'd love your feedback on this. I think this is something that a lot of you are going to put into action, especially because we're approaching that mid-year point. And it's a great time for us to examine what have we accomplished? Are we on track for our goals? Do we have the right mindset? What needs to change? What am I doing well that I should continue? What's not working so well that maybe I need to modify? What is missing in my plan that I need to add, right? So those are all great questions to ask yourself right now. And of course, if I can be of help to you, let me know. So let's go into the first uh, law of growth that John talks about in the book. And that is the law of intentionality which we've talked about a lot here on Mojo and, and a lot here this morning. And basically, again, it's really knowing that you have a plan around personal growth, that you are not assuming that your growth will happen spontaneously and organically. It's knowing where you are currently and where you want to be and really understanding more about yourself, your strengths and weaknesses, and making a plan uh, that is going to help you grow. So I mentioned a personal growth plan a little while ago in the beginning of our, our time together. And so a good way for you to examine how you can get better and grow in certain areas is to create this personal growth plan. And your, growth, your personal growth plan should really align with your goals, right? Your personal and professional goals so that the things that you accomplish on your personal growth plan are fueling the other goals that you have because you're developing skill set, you're um, learning new things, you are sharpening the tools in your toolbox that will help you accomplish your goals at a, a faster or higher level. Um, and so what I've done uh, is something that uh, I've taught a lot of people now to do is in the beginning of the year, the end of the year before the new year starts, is I just create something on a Word document with 12 boxes. One box represents each month of the year. And I think about the goals that I have. I think about where I want to see improvement or growth. And I seek out, you know, and I, I do research and this could take an entire day sometimes, uh, but I research books I wanna read, classes I wanna take, experiences I wanna have, how do I want to really enrich myself? How do I want to, you know, as I said, sharpen the tools, learn new things. Um, and it's really a lot of fun. And then I, I keep that in front of me at all times so that I can be intentional about scheduling the time and, and working through what I have on my growth plan. Now, sometimes I'm really on it. Sometimes I'm a little off track. Uh, the key is that, you know, if you have it in front of you and if you work with a coach, send that to your coach and uh, give your coach permission to hold you accountable to that. Uh, and I've done that and that helps a lot. And so I have some, some work to do to get back on track with my growth plan right now. I'm going to just be honest with you. Uh, and so that's a great opportunity for me to examine, you know, where I can schedule more time to read that book or, or uh, take that workshop or whatever it is that might be on my growth plan. And it, I believe it should be fluid too. Um, I don't scrap things just because I'm losing um, momentum, but I will adjust my plan if something comes up that I think is, is even a better opportunity or, um, you know, a, a workshop or seminar shows up that I didn't know about at the time that I made my growth plan, I'll adjust it. Uh, the key really is to not have more than probably two three tops on, on any given month, because, you know, the, the goal is to, to accomplish this, right? And to feel like you're making progress. Um, so you have to be very mindful of your schedule and you have to be really aware of what you, you really feel you can accomplish. Um, so if you have any questions about personal growth plan, let me know. I'll put my template on um, the Facebook group if it's not already there. Um, and, and that's just a good reminder, check the file section of the Facebook group. I don't know, does anyone have a personal growth plan already? Um, if you do, let me know. Um, so, okay, I'm just checking Facebook. I love when you guys are talking to me there. Um, so this, this first law of intentionality, as I've mentioned to you, is, 
is really getting purposeful and facing any fears that you have around your goals or growth and knowing that it's important to just do it anyway, right? And to work through. Um, know that change, uh, moving from that accidental or organic way of thinking to something much more intentional and purposeful is going to create big changes and transformations in your, in your personal and professional life. Uh, and that can be really exciting. Now, in terms of being intentional, it's also important to mention you really have to have a strong sense of self for this. Uh, being self-actualized or really knowing your strengths and weaknesses makes this really, um, I think, much more um, productive when, when knowing like exactly who you are and who you're not so that you can focus and, and work through your strength zone rather than working hard to overcome weaknesses. So those are just some other side notes that I wanted to mention. All right, the last one I wanna to talk to you about this morning is actually number two, I'm gonna go in order, and that is the law of awareness. So I, if I had a dollar for every time I said this in conversations, coaching, leadership meetings, um, awareness is a gift and it's the first step to any kind of change, right? If we're not aware of something, we truly can't change it. And so um, this is huge. Uh, after awareness comes acceptance, right? Because once you become aware of something, you get to decide what to do about it. And let's be honest, how many times in our, in our lives have we been aware, become aware of something and then choose to ignore it, right? So when we're talking about growth and we're talking about opportunity for bigger results in our lives, then we know that acceptance is step one, which is really a gift because without having acceptance, we don't have the opportunity to change it. Um, I mean, step one is awareness, excuse me, because we don't have an opportunity to change it. And then step two is acceptance because once we are aware of it, we have to be willing to do something about it. So that's what John talks about in the second chapter of the book. Um, and I think that this is, is so powerful because it, this could be a stopgap for a lot of us. Um, so knowing that you have uh, this awareness around the growth. So here are some questions that I'm going to encourage you to write down. If you do like to journal, you can consider this a journal prompt. I'll probably add this to that section of the um, uh, files in our Facebook group too. There's a document there that I started on questions on journal prompts. So here are a couple questions. Um, can you do what you would like to do right now? Can you do what you would like to do right now? What that question is going to help you examine is if you are in alignment with your values and your desires, right? Because if you feel that you can't, or if you feel that that's not possible, or you feel like you're even stuck, then that's certainly not going to give you an opportunity to move forward and to grow. So that's a powerful question. Um, the other question I thought was interesting here is, uh, John has this in the book, do you know the difference, do you know the difference between what you want and what you're good at? That also can be pretty revealing, right? I think sometimes we hold on to certain dreams and concepts that may not serve us. And so when we can get really clear, uh, and that goes back to knowing more about yourself, your strengths, if we can align who we are uh, with what we do, then there's a lot of power in that, right? And we can accomplish things with far less stress. And so I think that's a really powerful question. Do you know the difference between what you want and what you're good at? Because those two things should match up. Um, another great question to really help you identify more of your big why is do you know what drives you? Do you know what gives you satisfaction? Right? And it's interesting how some of us don't take the time to ask ourselves these questions. We find ourselves just going through life, kind of in a pattern, moving at, at, at this direction and not really examining, is this in alignment with what I truly find, you know, exciting, passionate? What is my big why? What is my deep motivation? Um, so I think that was also really powerful. Um, the other questions that I think are, um, great journal prompts I'm going to give you also very quickly, uh, sort of ties into some things you've already heard. Number one, what would you really like to do? Seems easy enough, right? But I think it's that really, what would you really 
really like to do? And why aren't you doing it, right? Is there some limiting belief holding you back? Is there just some more planning that needs to be done? Uh, does it go back to what I said around personal growth plans Some things you need to learn, some things you need to sharpen in your toolbox? Uh, but asking that question, opening that up gives you a plan. So I thought that was powerful. Uh, the other questions that I want to give you this morning um, is who is helping you get there? Who is helping you get there? Do you have a coach? Do you have mentors? Do you have people who have accomplished uh, big things themselves or, you know, have built successful businesses? Who are you taking counsel from? So that's, that's also powerful. Um, and the, the last question this morning is, where do you most need to grow? Where do you most need to grow? And that sometimes is a hard question to answer alone. Uh, that may be a question like, so if I was coaching you right now, and we uh, were going to talk about that, where do you need to grow most? I would probably ask you some questions around where do you struggle or where do you find, um, you know, your thoughts go when it comes to opportunity and setting goals? And is there any gap in your skill set there? that you might want to look at that will help you move forward. So I know our time is uh, just about done this morning. Uh, I would love your thoughts. I would love your feedback. You can share them with me at any time on the Facebook group. I don't know if anyone who's with me now has any questions or comments or ahas, whether it be on Facebook or here on Zoom, let me know. Um, but I am, as I said, going to be teaching from this book over the next couple of weeks. And um, the, the purpose of this Monday Morning Mojo is to get you thinking, is for me to ask you questions that will open up dialogue and thoughts that will move you forward in some way. So know that I'm always here to support you and help you even on uh, other days of the week. And I would love to hear from you. So please use our Facebook group as that um, community, as that chat. I would love to know what your ahas were or what you took away from this morning. I'd love to know what questions you're gonna work on. Your thoughts and your feedback also can inspire and share, you know, the, that sharing can inspire other people uh, to take action as well. So I wanna encourage you to do that. All right, so have a wonderful week. It's good to be back with you this morning and uh, I will look forward to seeing you again next Monday at 7.30 a.m where we'll talk about a couple more of these uh, laws of growth from John Maxwell's book. In the meantime, maybe you wanna pick up a copy uh, and uh, it's, it's an inexpensive uh, book you can find it on Amazon and all the places you normally get a book. It's, it's something that's available on Audible too and, uh, and really look at how to put that into action. And if I can help in any way, let me know. All right, everyone have a great day and a successful happy week and I'll talk to you soon.